All right. A lot has happened. Uh, this dev stream was phenomenal. Way better than I expected. I could not. I wasn't even a little bit disappointed in the stuff that we saw because we saw so much and we heard about almost everything I could possibly want to hear about. So we have a, we have some stuff to go over. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, the first thing uh, they talked about what is coming in seventeen point five, and interestingly, uh, we're getting the arc wing or the half arc wing boss fight uh, with the new J three. We're getting just the boss fight portion of it, and then it will come in the trial later. I guess it's for uh, a sort of mass bug test and to just kind of like get people into it and let them attempt it and try it. Uh, I think this is partially a little bit to make people uh, level their Arcwing stuff, honestly. Uh, so that will be very interesting. Uh, it'll be kind of a, a weird thing that'll be in 17.5, but I'm interested to try it, definitely for sure. Uh, and the other thing that was confirmed for 17.5 and has been is the Valkyr skin, which we will show a little bit later. Uh, whenever, actually, no, we'll just show that right now. Uh, I got this screenshot of it. it looks really, really nice. Uh, this screenshot is a little weird. Looks pretty good. Uh, they walked around with it and did some stuff with it a little bit on the dev stream. Uh, nothing too crazy, and they talked about her changes, which we will go over a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, that's what the Valkyr skin looks like. Looks really good. Definitely happy for or happy about it uh, and want to get it. Uh, so uh, next, going with the theme of talking about some Arcwing stuff first uh, with that trial boss fight. Uh, Arcwing is receiving some changes, a lot of quality of life stuff. Everything that they talked about sounded really good, but uh, there's some stars to denote some special context for that. Uh, first of all, is that uh, the way you perceive enemies has changed. It's no longer on like a radar. Uh, all enemies in your field of vision have markers, so you can just kind of look at them and then they will move accordingly, sort of, I suppose. Uh, and you can just look around and see the enemies much more clearly, as opposed to being like, what, what does it look like on the mid? Is he above me? Or is he, is he behind that? Or, mm, I don't know where these enemies are. So it'll get rid of that problem, uh, almost certainly. Uh, and then they're going to have more aggressive enemies that are faster, they can get to you faster, they want to fight you more, uh, and allegedly will have more tactics. I don't know how much I believe that portion of it, but making it so that there's more getting close to each other and fighting is good, uh, and should be fun. Now here's the thing that I don't know if I totally trust, they said they're going to reduce the Arcwing grind, uh, which is a thing that needs to happen, enemies need more affinity, something, because it takes literally a million years to level Arcwing stuff, and it sucks, and it's why I have not leveled most of my Arcwing stuff. Uh, I have my Elytron and some other level 30 stuff, and I don't do Arcwing unless I absolutely have to, and that's kind of how I've treated Arcwing, but some of these changes are kind of making it a little more, more appealing. Uh, and then we have Afterburner mode, uh, which is going to be like after you have sprinted for a while, you kind of kick in the afterburner effect and just go super fast. So that will help with some of the like place to place and like racing uh, that you can just kind of like just blow through a level. Uh, should make your completion times better, lower dead time, just a good change. Uh, and then they just kind of said that there would be various quality of life changes like balance passes, things like that. Uh, all of that stuff. Sounds great, Arcwing needs to be better, and all of that stuff sounds like it is going to make Arcwing at least minorly better. I, th I think it has kind of a ways to go until it's where it should be, uh, but all those changes sound awesome, and I have no problem with any of them. Uh, so then we're gonna talk about Arcanes. Uh, so Arcanes, if you don't know, are a thing that you get at the end of the current raid, uh, and they're a various rarity, and you apply them to Sindanas and helmets and such. So some of that stuff is changing, and we're getting new ones. So there will be new ones with the new trial that I hope are a little more effective than the ones we have currently. Uh, currently, a lot of the arcanes, like just based on what they do, there are maybe two or three really good ones and a lot of stinkers. Uh, so hopefully these new ones are more of like the big movement, like this is the thing I need, or like this is good on all Warframes. Uh, and stuff like that. Uh, you're gonna have an arcane like management screen, which should be really nice to have. Uh, I assume it will have some ease of access type improvements like that. Uh, and then uh, the distillers to remove arcanes from things are going to be half the cost. So just improvements there. Okay, 
So now we get into the big stuff. Uh, so there is a Monkey King Warframe that we will not be getting uh, very, very soon, but we will be getting it. Forget what you heard about it being exclusive permanently somewhere. It's not. We're getting the Warframe. His name is Wukong. Uh, just like every single other uh, Journey to the West character that anyone makes ever, just name them Wukong. Very easy. Uh, so yeah, Wukong, he is a Chinese Warframe timed exclusive, which means that they get him for 30 days, and then we get him. Uh, so that the timed exclusivity thing is a tactic to make um, games more appealing, and it happens a lot in the industry uh for example like tomb raider is coming to xbox one first and is coming to ps4 and pc later uh, it's a way to move sales or move downloads or get people interested and do things like that uh, exclusivity is a good way to get people interested so that is a kind of thing that's going to happen no matter what uh so visually i think he looks really really good uh his powers also seem good, although I'm not 100% sure the like great usefulness of two of them. Uh, they weren't shown off super great. Uh, and I looked at their like release video for him on the Chinese version of Warframe, and I wasn't 100% sure what one of them did. Uh, but visually, he looks like this. Uh, he is very cool looking. I like his uh, energy ponytails, as it were. Uh, very, very cool. I like it a lot. Okay, uh, so... His power rundown. His one seems to be a buff of some kind. Seems to be a melee buff. Uh, couldn't get a lot out of the video. Uh, also, the link to that Chinese Warframe video that shows off his powers is going to be in the description. I have it here so that I can move it to the description when necessary. So if you want to look at that, go ahead. Uh, if you can figure out what that buff does more than me, please do. I would love to know exactly what it does. Uh, his two is a hard knockdown in a line, or at least I'm pretty sure it's his two. Uh, that seems like it could be really good. Uh, hard knockdowns are always really good. And just get a bunch of people on the floor and not have to worry about them. Decent ability. Scales. Pretty good. Uh, his three is cloud walking, which basically he jumps up and he turns into a bunch of fucking mist. And it sets enemies up for finishers and you can fly and they can't see you. And it's just seems real nice. Seems like a real like good power uh, that is also unique. And it drains energy based on how much you're moving. So they said if you could, if you sit still, it's basically free, which is really interesting, and I like it a great deal. It's very, very cool to have that that way. Uh, and then his four, which I am calling Exalted Staff, uh, he whips out his special staff, and it changes sizes and does all kinds of crazy shit, and you slam the ground and do some fucking sick earthquake moves, and it's just really fucking cool. And that's what the Monkey King Wukong does. So whenever we get that... That that's gonna go places. That 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 seems like it's gonna be a real good Warframe. Uh, and speaking of really good Warframes, uh, the Brawler Warframe Atlas. Okay, so this is what he looks like. Oop, whoops. Oh, well, that's not what I wanted to move. Here we go. Brawler Warframe Atlas. Uh, he is a big, bulky dude with the widest shoulders I've ever seen in my whole life. Uh, and he. Oh man. I think he's my he's my new favorite. I really really like Valkyr. Man, they showed what he does. Oh boy, I can't. Mm. All right, let's just go over what he does. His first power is like slash dash, where you target an enemy and you dash at them and you punch them. But then also, you punch the shit out of them and then you can keep hitting one. And you do a sick combo that has an uppercut that ragdolls in it. And you can just keep going and punching the shit out of dudes. And it does more damage and costs less energy the more you do it. So it's the coolest shit ever. That shit is amazing. I hope it scales. I want it to scale so badly. I want this to be like the, the guy who fights level 300 enemies no problem with his punch and fists. That's what I want in my life. Okay, let's move on. His two, you can bring up a shield of rocks in front of you, and then, if you activate the power again, you can just push that shit towards enemies and bowl them right the fuck over. That is a really versatile power that potentially scales really well, uh, depending on how much health your rocks have whenever you turn them into a shield. 
being able to just put cover in front of yourself is really, really good and is super fun and strong. Uh, but if it doesn't have a lot of restrictions, like being able to block doorways and do cool shit, oh, it seems so good. Anyway, uh, his third is like a channeling gaze in front of you that petrifies enemies. Uh, it starts by slowing them, and I think it's depending on how much health they have, it just turns them to stone and you can just shatter them. Which is fucking cool. Uh, even if that ability doesn't scale super hard, uh, having like an AoE slow in front of you is pretty strong, pretty good, uh, and it's just a fun looking ability, and it's, man, it's really, it's really cool. Uh, and then his four, which is the ability I'm worried the most about, uh, summons two stone golems that will run out and, uh, beat the shit out of stuff, and just be a general distraction, uh, and they just seem really cool, and I'm not sure... I'm not sure if that's his most disappointing ability. It's definitely very, like, cool, but summons traditionally are not very good, a la Necros is for, where the summons kind of don't know what to do, they're pretty dumb, and it, they kind of, eh, eh. That's the questionable one. I think the rest of his stuff seems really, really good, and I'm super excited for it, and I think, like, overall, he is my new favorite, uh, provided that he doesn't come out and his numbers are so low that they don't matter then it's going to be kind of hard to make him my favorite. Uh, and he will be obtained from a quest and then a boss, uh, probably similar to the way Mesa was, uh, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, regardless, I am getting him immediately, and I am probably just buying him straight up. It seems awesome. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, we have a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of thing about the star chart, uh, and that is that our void keys will still be relevant whenever the new star chart comes out, so don't run them all thinking you need to get the credits out of them right now, because that's not necessary. Uh, so yeah, that is the small update that people have been worried about. Uh, okay, so uh, basically I've divided this uh, into two sides, or this side is my normal notes, uh, and this left side is the more controversial notes, I suppose. Uh, so the first thing, and this is going to get a lot of people riled up, is the Mesa rework of her four. So this is not a nerf. This is similar to the changes to Excalibur, and done right, it sounds really good. So. Uh, the chat blew up, and they did not like this at all. Uh, so you will have your auto-firing, auto-targeting in an FOV, field of vision, your, your field of vision, in front of you, which is a pretty good ability on its own, just considering that. Uh, this makes it a much more active ability, and your vision of auto-targeting narrows into like your aiming, and as it narrows, you do more damage. So that's pretty good. And the reason that it's pretty good is that right now there's a meta of Mesa sitting in the middle of a map and just killing all the dudes, uh, which I don't really like, honestly. It's super efficient, I'll absolutely say that. Um, but I think making Mesa more active, and especially if this gives her the ability to move when she's in Peacemaker, uh, I think this will make Mesa better on the whole, and maybe even scale even farther than she does right now. Because that increased damage as you focus means that if you look at that motherfucker over there, and you're fully focused, oh, he gonna die. That motherfucker could be level 200, and he's gonna be dead real soon. Like, you're gonna take no shit with the, like, higher damage per focus. It's gonna be probably really, really fucking strong. Uh, and I don't think Mesa is going to be nerfed to hell, uh, like the chat seemed to think so whenever this was said. Uh, so, the Valkyr improvements. Uh, all they talked about and showed was that Ripline is way faster, uh, and that it will be getting sort of like the new Brawler Warframe, changes on like recasting Ripline over and over to make it cost less, uh, which should be good. Uh, and then her alt is going to be turned into be like Exalted Blade, uh, basically just toggleable though, no real big changes there. Uh, which seems good. 
uh, her having the lifesteal on that uh, innately means that you can do some interesting things. Yeah, so it should be really good. Uh, I think Valkyr will be just a little bit better after her rework and her skin comes out. So that will be really good. Uh, new Corpus enemies. This is a little bit less on the controversial side, in my opinion. Uh, but I think some people are going to have a problem with what they do. Specifically, Loki Master Race will have kind of a problem with this. Uh, so they are very, very fast. They're kind of on rollerblades. This is what it appeared to be. And they have a lot of various weapons. And it's uh, a dual-gendered enemy, which is kind of interesting. Kind of a first. It's like they can be male or female. It's just random. Uh, which is pretty interesting because most of the enemies we fight are male. So they wanted to switch that up according to popular demand. Uh, so they have helmets that are... They are a fun They have a function that is an aura that is line of sight on you that will remove or disable certain powers. And it depends on what helmet it is, what gets removed off of you. And these can be um, buffs and damage abilities. And it depends on what their helmet is. Now, their helmets can be shot off. So basically what these enemies are doing is they are, they're more, as long as the range isn't too big, they make it more active and more targeted what enemies you need to be fighting. Uh, and as long as they make it very clear what powers will be disabled within the AoE around them, these enemies will be a good addition to the game uh, and make it more interesting, which I think is fine. Uh, they have potential to be real fucking annoying, uh, but I don't think they're even as bad as nullifiers because they are pretty easily neutralized uh, by just shooting their helmet off, which seem to be fairly simple. Helmets are pretty large. Uh, so I think some people are going to have a problem with that because if you get near them, your invisibility goes away. That's not good uh, for uh, Loki players. Uh, but on the whole, I think it's really good. I think it should be fine. Uh, I think it'll just make the game a little bit more active again. Uh, that is a good change. Uh, so, uh, then we have some news on the Deluxe skins. Uh, Guardian Rhino, who it sounds is very near completion, which is really interesting. Uh, it seems like that got done, like, really, really fast. Because uh, they kept saying, like, it was done, but I'm not sure if they were just talking about the uh, weapon skin that is going to be coming with it, which is this. Which is a big fucking hammer. It's pretty good. Uh, I like how this hammer looks. This hammer is my style. I'm down for this hammer. It's pretty good. Uh, so that looks that looks awesome. Uh, so let's talk about the most controversial thing. Uh, so from the last dev stream, multi shot was talked about. Uh, it was going like the way that it was portrayed. It was going to be the biggest nerf that anyone's ever seen of all time, which is not okay. Uh, that is like the least okay thing ever that has ever existed ever. Uh, so basically, um, the feedback from that uh, news that we probably weren't supposed to hear yet uh, is that Scott is looking at damage as a whole, looking at what would happen if they changed it so that whenever you got a weapon, it would increase its stats going from 0 to 30, uh, revisiting all of your mandatory mods, your multi-shot and your serration and weapons or weapon mods like that. Uh, looking at how enemies scale and why we need these mandatory mods, uh, revisit auto installation, and stuff like that. Basically what this boils down to is that they're trying to fix the problem where you need to put serration, or not serration, hornet strike, barrel diffusion, lethal torrent. Because right now, those are the three mods that go first into every single secondary weapon all of them every single one gets those three mods without exception i think i'm pretty sure it's every single one there may be one or two exceptions but that doesn't mean a whole lot that is a problem <laughs> because it means that you instead of having eight mods of variety you have five mods of variety which is also usually boiled down to put elements in it of various degrees and status and occasionally put critical mods in it which is kind of the only mix-up that we get 
so they want to look at putting a system in place where you get your damage from leveling it and then your mods are personal tweaks uh, as opposed to just raw damage uh, and we need that raw damage to get through these high level enemies uh, which is why enemy scaling needs to be looked at uh, and the revis revisiting auto installation uh, is to make the auto installation more beneficial because right now it puts a lot of shit mods uh, into your weapons often uh, and sometimes doesn't even put serration or hornet strike into your weapons and that's just not correct uh, so yeah that is the way it was talked about it seems like it would be an improvement uh, and that is fine for me as someone who can see change for what it is uh, and I know a lot of people just simply don't like change uh, so that's going to be difficult for those players but I pulled a quote on, out of Steve who I think uh, has the right idea about how this is going to work and that is the game benefits from shakeups to the meta so that goes two ways one which Rebecca kind of immediately pointed out is that you don't want to make it so that players feel like they did a bunch of work and then now fuck you for doing all that work uh, that's not what you want to have players do what you would want is to for those players that did the work either compensate them via legendary cores like an insane amount of cores uh, stuff like that the way they did it with the uh, stamina mods and things of that nature uh, or change the system to fit what you already have in place uh, so that is kind of what like the one side where that's bad because if you're not doing the compensation doing all that kind of stuff uh, that's fucked for your players and nobody likes that the other side of that coin however is that by shaking things up and fucking with the meta you you make the game you give it more longevity uh, in a way that is interesting so for those of you that have played or heard of Hearthstone uh, this is a similar thing that is more important in card games and if you've played any card game you should probably be able to like immediately recognize that uh, shakeups to the meta in a card game it's more easily nailed down where it's like this deck this deck this deck and this deck are the ones that get played this is the current meta these are the best decks uh, usually it's pretty objective why those are the best decks and I won't be very specific because I'm sure nobody really wants me to talk about Hearthstone unless it's a Hearthstone video uh, so they release expansions in card games to mix this up and change things uh, and give people new things to experiment with we get that on a smaller scale with new weapons and warframes uh, and things like that but the top end of our meta doesn't change a whole lot but when it does it shakes things up and makes things more interesting like whenever the soma got added that was a huge new weapon things are like well everybody get the soma we all have to use this do this thing this is optimal this is what we do and like you give like more play time uh, and it's cool to have a new weapon to think about like for me personally theory crafting on new warframes what builds we can use how warframes work together that kind of stuff is all very interesting uh, and that's just really cool things and that's kind of the benefit of shaking things up uh, just from a game design and interest level standpoint from players to my understanding again as I've said before I'm not a game developer I just like to talk about that stuff and what I've kind of noticed uh, and heard opinions of and absorbed through osmosis from like people that are on dev teams uh, that have talked about this stuff and make sense of it uh, so yeah Whew. that's a good dev stream that's a that's a that's like a real good dev stream oh and uh, the handshake animation is almost in and meditate is going to be toggleable for those of you that really like the emotes yeah uh, but yeah overall awesome dev stream pretty much could not have been better like if we got more star chart stuff is about the only way that could have gotten better uh, lots of awesome stuff was talked about and I'm just excited for just all these new things coming in 
it should be awesome. And I will see you guys tomorrow.